This field of flowers is only about two inches by two inches. Join me today, start to finish, as I stitch this piece. Starting with a piece of fabric as my inspiration, creating a landscape, a sense of distance, and lots of depth and dimension using color and stitch. I'll show how I stitched the flowers, created a horizon line, and much more. I'm so glad you're here. Let's get started. I'm starting with a piece of felt that is one and three quarter by two inches. Two options are to use a kilt pin and turn this into a brooch or to use a wood bobbin that I have as a frame. As I get further in the project, I'll decide which I want to use. Both are good options. I'm going to start by creating a collage. And what I've done is I've chosen one piece of fabric that's my inspiration for this project, and here it is. It's got several shades of green in the background and these beautiful pink flowers with yellow centers. This fabric is a stretch material. It's a fabric that I don't normally work with, but I love the pattern so much that I'm going to make it work for this project. So the first thing I'm going to do is place this piece of fabric on my collage and build from there. I've pulled several pieces of fabric that I think will be a good match and so I just audition them one by one. Some are prints, some are hand dyed. And as I move them around, I can see that some of the green tones are very complementary, and some of the green tones aren't quite right. So that helps me decide which pieces I want to use. And when I bring in this piece of dyed green fabric, I can see how well they go together. So I haven't decided on another piece of fabric yet, so I'm just going to start with these two and then bring in some third options. And I'm really liking this turquoise piece for the top. So I'm going to baste the fabrics in place. I'm gonna do that using regular sewing thread. I come in from the back and I take small stitches on the front. I jump across. So there's lots of thread on the back, which makes it easier to remove later. And I make the stitches as small as I can so they're not distracting. I'm going to move back and forth, securing these pieces at the edges and working through the middle. Now that these two pieces are secured, I'm gonna complete the collage by adding this third piece and I'm gonna trim everything. I'm gonna test this out with my wood background and I'm liking the way that looks. So now I'm gonna choose some floss colors. I'm choosing a dark, a medium, and a light green, a pink and a yellow that goes with the flowers, and a turquoise blue that goes with that piece on the top that will be the sky. The needles I'm gonna be using today are embroidery needles and milliner's needles. These ones are Goldeneye by Clover, and there are other brands that are good as well. The difference between these two types of needles is that the embroidery needles have a slightly larger eye, so the eye is wider than the shaft of the needle. And in the milliner's needles, it's all the same width, so the eye is actually punched right into the shaft of the needle. This makes them really easy to pull through stitching. I like both types of needles, so maybe pick up both kinds and try them both and see what you like. If I'm using two strands of floss, I'll use a bigger needle. And if I'm using one strand of floss, I'll use a smaller or thinner needle. Today, I'm going to be using two strands of floss and also nearer to the end, one strand of floss. I'm gonna start working with two strands of floss. I'm using my middle green color, not the darkest, not the lightest. It's the one that matches the closest with the dyed green fabric. I'm going in and out with straight stitches. This is gonna start the process of uniting the colors in the two fabrics, as well as securing everything in place. I stitch across till I get to the one side and then I flip my piece over and I begin stitching back in the other direction. And I'll do this as many times as I want until I get the look for this first layer. Then I'm gonna tie off and I'm gonna add a second color. This time I'm using the lightest green color and that color matches some of the background of this floral fabric. And I'm gonna begin stitching on both pieces of fabric. I'm using straight stitches. 
And because this piece is so small, it's easier for me to do a stab stitch, which means I'm going from front to back and back to front. Instead of doing a running stitch where I'm working with my needle in the front. Now, I mentioned earlier that this floral fabric is a stretch material. I'm guessing it's a polyester, almost like a bathing suit material. So it's very stretchy. So I'm going to begin securing that piece in place. I'm going to be conscious of any distortion that can happen because it's stretchy. I'm not going to stitch too tightly. I'm going to go in and out. And because I'm using this light green color, I'm going to stitch in the places that have that color. At this point, I'm not looking to make contrasting stitches. These stitches are adding texture and securing down this stretchy fabric. So I'm working my way across in those areas where there is the lighter green. And now I'm bringing in my darkest green color. First, I'm going to stitch in the areas that have the darkest green to continue securing down this stretchy fabric. I'm going to work my way across the length of this piece of fabric, and then I'm going to expand the stitches into the areas that have lighter green. This is gonna start the process of adding some depth and dimension. I'm still using two strands, and I'm working my way over to the corner. And this feels like a good time to me to begin stitching a border. I still have that darkest green on my needle, and I'm at the corner, so I'm gonna switch it up and start doing the blanket stitch. So I stitch from the front to the back, and I'm holding the thread in my left hand so that when I come up to pull on my needle, it's gonna form a knot. And the knot of the blanket stitch means that each stitch is connected to the next. I'm folding over the edges of this piece as I go, I'm working my way across. When I get to the corner, I can take a couple of extra stitches, turn, and continue up the other side. So here's the progress so far. You can see that the blanket stitching is starting to pull in the edges and create a bit of a frame. So I'm going to continue and work my way all the way around. So here's my first round of blanket stitching in this darkest green. And I wanna take a moment to talk about imperfect and uneven stitching. If you look really close at the stitching that I've done, you can see that the spacing of the stitches isn't perfect, the angle isn't perfect, and how long they are isn't perfect, but it's all okay. The overall look really works, and so I want to encourage anyone who feels even just a bit of perfectionism to let it go. This is a place to just enjoy and relax, and don't worry about perfect stitches because no one's going to notice. It's part of the charm and it's really okay. So now I'm gonna continue along the bottom with my blanket stitching. And one thing you might notice as you're doing blanket stitching is that your thread gets twisted. So all you have to do is drop your needle, let the thread dangle and it will untwist and that will make it a lot easier to continue. So you can do this as many times as you need to as you're stitching. So I'm taking a look at my piece so far and doing a mid-project evaluation. And I think what I wanna do is continue with this meadow. I also wanna add some stitching to that top area, that light turquoise color with white, that's going to be my sky. So I'm going to thread up with two strands in that coordinating color and do some straight stitching to secure down that piece of fabric. I'm able to take some stitches, not using the stab stitch style here, but I'm able to work on the front where I put my needle in and bring it out without ever pulling it to the back. So I'm working my way across this strip of fabric, making straight stitches where the two fabrics meet, just like I did at the beginning where the other two pieces of fabric met. Now I want to expand the meadow into the distance and I'm going to continue up this one side with stitching. And I also want to continue to add depth and give the impression that this meadow is stretching far into the distance. So I'm bringing in this darker green color and I'm stitching in between the stitches that already exist to add that depth of greenery. 
because this darkest green color shows up the most, it's going to really add dimension. So here you can see I've added that dark green color. I've moved it up beyond those three pink flowers and it's adding a depth dimension that I was looking for. So now I'm gonna add some stitches with the mid green color and continue this layering of greenery. And now I've switched back to the darkest green color and I'm gonna do some blanket stitching. And I'm going to stitch in between the dark green stitches that are already there to begin creating more of a border. I'm using a different type of finger protection today that might be hard to see. They're these little adhesive discs called Thimblet. And I put it on the side of my finger, right at the point where the needle often will push or rub, and it causes some irritation. I like that you can place these wherever you want them, and you can use them multiple times. So I'm gonna to continue to use these. I find they really help with the way that I stitch. I'm adding one more layer of stitching in this blue turquoise color, right along the border where the dyed green meets the blue. Now I'm moving back to the border and I'm gonna add some blanket stitching. I'm looking at the top, the part that I'm thinking about as my sky, and I'm using that light blue turquoise color and I'm stitching in between the green stitches that were there before. And I'm making my stitches really close together. So it's gonna have this nice satin stitch effect all the way across the top. I'm really liking the look that it's given to the piece. And now it's time to add more flowers. I'm gonna start with the center of a flower. So I have the yellow, two strands, and I'm going to take some stitches close together to form the center. If you look at the other flowers, the centers aren't perfectly round. So I'm stitching back and forth to make a roundish shape. So it's a little hard to see here, but you can see I've taken a few stitches creating that nice central piece. So now I'm gonna tie off my yellow and I'm gonna come in with the pink and I'm gonna create the flower around this center. So to create the petals, I'm going to take straight stitches and I'm gonna move them around the yellow. So I'm gonna start taking one stitch and another all the way around until I've completely surrounded the yellow. And then I'm just going to thicken those petals by taking more stitches around and around. And I'm not trying to make perfect petals here. I'm really just expanding in a circular direction, trying to make it look very organic. So I'm gonna keep working my way around until I think that I have enough of a petal look. So here's what I've done so far. I think it's looking like a nice flower. I've made it smaller because it's farther back and I'm going to continue and make another. So here's another. I've done the same process, starting with the yellow center and surrounding it. And I want to continue making these flowers all the way back into the distance with the flowers getting smaller and smaller as I work back. So before I add more flowers, I want to add more greenery in the background, more texture for this meadow of flowers. So I'm coming in with the lighter green color and I'm stitching some straight lines and I'm placing my stitches in between stitches that already exist. And I'm also expanding the field a bit, creating some new stitches where I haven't stitched before. So here you can see the progress I'm making with this lighter green color and the meadow is getting larger and larger. And I have a nice backdrop now to add some more flowers. So I've created several more here using that same process, trying to make them a little bit smaller if they're farther back and a little bit bigger if they're closer. And I think this is a good time to put my attention back to what the original flowers that were in the fabric. And I'm gonna use my pink and yellow floss and stitch right over top adding texture to these flowers. It's gonna make them look even more like the ones I've created. And because this is such a small piece, I only need to take small stitches to get a really nice textural effect. 
So after adding yellow to the centers of those flowers, I'm liking the texture that's created there and I'm ready to add some stems. I'm taking the darkest green and I'm adding some stitches right underneath the flowers that I've already created and that's going to give the effect of stems. Now I'm turning my attention back to the edges and I'm going to add more blanket stitching. So here I have my mid green color that's matching that green in the background and I'm doing the same thing I did at the top with the blue. I'm creating stitches very close together, giving the satin stitch effect, and it gives a nice clean look to the edges. You might notice at this point that I haven't removed the basting stitches. The only place that I can still see stitches is in the green area where I haven't stitched. I'm just gonna clip them out and remove them. So now I'm ready to stitch in that area. I'm switching over to one strand of floss and I'm using the color that matches that green fabric and I'm stitching for texture. Because this color matches so closely, it's not going to show up in a contrasting way in terms of color, but it is going to add texture. So I'm able to do stitching where my needle stays on the front. So it's not a stab stitch, it's stitching on the front. I'm going to cover this entire area. This is a slow relaxing process. It's very forgiving because the color is matching. I'm not worried about my stitches being perfect. They're going to be slightly different lengths, slightly different angles, and I'm using that one strand of floss so the effect is very subtle. You can see now the background has that nice texture that you get from stitching and it's added a perfect background for the rest of the stitching that I want to do. I'm going to pause at this point and bring back in my wood and put my piece in front of it to see if I still like the effect. And I do, so I know I'm on the right track. The next thing I want to do is add a horizon line. So I have my darkest green and I'm bringing it up to the top where the blue meets the green. I'm taking a few stitches to see if I like this color for my horizon, and I do. So now what I'm going to do is take the thread, and for the rest of that line, I'm going to pull my thread tight right across the piece and have a look. And that looks great, looks like a really nice horizon. So I'm going to take that thread all the way across and put my needle at the end and pull it through. Now I'm going to go back and do a couching stitch to anchor that long thread in place. Couching is a way to attach a thread on top of stitching. So I move along on the back and come out and take a stitch that encloses that thread and it anchors it in place. And then I move along a little further and I do it again. So I'm working my way back to where this long piece of floss started. And then when I get to the end, I'm gonna start adding straight stitching up and down to further enhance this horizon line. This is one strand of floss, so the effect is really subtle. And each stitch that I take is just going to add a more organic look. So I take my time and I work my way back across, adding small stitches all the way across. So here's my horizon line filled in with all those small stitches with one strand, and I'm really liking that. So now I'm going to extend the greenery, creating the background for some more flowers using the lightest green color and one strand of floss, taking small stitches to mimic the greenery that's in front. I'm going to take it all the way to the top, and I'm going to start moving across to the left for a very subtle effect of this meadow, a field of flowers, going all the way back to the horizon. To create the flowers closer to the horizon, I'm gonna use French knots. I have one strand of the pink, and I'm wrapping it two or three times before I pull the needle all the way through. So for these flowers, I'm not going to use yellow, they're so small and so far back in the distance that I don't think that you would see the yellow centers. 
And then in other spots, I'm not going to make a French knot. Instead, I'm going to take two or three stitches side by side to make the flowers. This creates a slightly different flower shape than a French knot. And I want to do both, a mix of the two types of flowers. So I'm going to continue to work in this upper right area, making these very small flowers to complete my field. So here's my progress, the flowers I've done so far. You can see how subtle it is having these tiny either French knots or grouping of stitches. And I'm gonna continue and add some more. So here I filled it out quite a bit with different sizes of flowers, stretching all the way back. And now I wanna come in with my darkest green and add some more stems and leaves to these flowers. So I'm taking stitches underneath where I've created flowers. You can see when I flip it over to the back that there's so much stitching that I have to take care pulling through my needle. In some spots, I really have to tug to get the needle through. And that's because of the layers and layers of stitching that are already there. It's not impossible to pull the needle through. I just have to go slowly. So I'm taking stitches underneath all of my blossoms and I'm changing the direction of the stitches so that it looks like stems and leaves and the way that flowers would look when they were in a field. They're not stick straight. I'm just trying for a real natural organic look. I've put on my pushing thimble. This is a silicone thimble with a hard end to help me get that needle through. So here you can see the small stitches of green. I've used one strand here and I really like the effect that that's adding. So I'm gonna continue and I'm going to add some more. And now I'm looking at the area that doesn't have the flowers and I'm going to add another layer of stitch to that part of the meadow. So I'm coming in with one strand of floss. I'm using my lightest green color and I'm gonna stitch in between the stitches that are already there to add one more layer of color and texture. So you can see here, all the stitching I've done has caused some distortion to my piece. So I'm going to gently stretch and flatten it out to pull it back into shape. It's actually not that hard to do. And that gentle tugging has brought it back into shape. And now I can go back to adding more stitch to my field. So here it is, all complete. Every inch of this piece has stitching and texture. And I'm really happy with the result. So now I'm gonna bring in my wood bobbin and I'm gonna have a look at the small details. I can see a couple spots where there are some threads that are fraying. So I'm gonna trim them off and see if there's anything else that I wanna add. Gently stretching it out, placing it on there. And I'm really liking the way that that looks. I can see one area that I want to slightly adjust. So I'm going to stitch a little bit more in this one area where I want to lighten it up. And these are just final touches that happen near the very end. If there's something that your eye sees, you can just add a few more stitches. Put it back on my bobbin and there. It's looking great to me. So the final step is to attach my stitching to the wood. I'm going to use matte gel medium for this. This is used in acrylic painting, but it also works very well as a glue. So I'm getting some on just a regular paintbrush and I'm spreading it onto the wood, giving it a second to soak in while I flip over my stitched piece and I add the gel medium to the back of that as well. I'm trying to get all the places that are gonna make contact with the wood. And I'm gonna take my piece and put it onto the wood. And at first you can really adjust where you want it to sit. It will slide around a bit because of that gel medium. So I'm checking to make sure that it's making contact where I want it to and that it's placed exactly where I want it. I press it down and this can even be weighted down with a book. And I leave this to dry overnight. So here it is finished. A beautiful field of flowers in miniature. I really enjoyed stitching this. 
with the inspiration from that piece of fabric and expanding on it, making it my own and turning it into a beautiful landscape, a meadow of flowers. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this has inspired you to stitch your own piece and to give yourself permission to have wonky stitches and know that it's going to turn out okay in the end. Until next time, happy stitching.